In this video, we're gonna be talking about one of the most biggest disappointments in the NFT space by far, and we're also gonna be covering some up and coming project you gotta keep an eye out for. The first project that we are going to be talking about is going to be Pixelmon. Now back in early January, I did cover Pixelmon in the past, and one of the things I said was that because their roadmap was so vague and you know it was just a lot of promises, I was afraid that, yeah, maybe the art looks okay, but what if they don't deliver? And what actually is happening is that there's a lot of fuzz, there's a lot of drama going around about this project, and they didn't really deliver. So the project right now, if you kind of look at OpenSea, the assets that people are paying a lot of money for through Ethereum, the Dutch auction at the time, you know, you're not really getting your bang for your buck. If you look at some of the projects, like you have like this one over here, where it's like, come on, you know what I mean? Like this is not quality stuff. And even when you look at the other different projects, it's kind of the same thing, right? There's not much variation. There's literally just not that great asset behind the background and people get the same thing. And one of the interesting things that the founder said was that he's like, oh, you know, OpenSea, they downgrade the resolution and everything like that. But I don't necessarily think that is true because even if you made these assets super high resolution, like the silhouette is a silhouette and I don't think it's gonna get better no matter how high definition it gets. So I'm trying to be as objective as possible. I'm not trying to say like, oh, it's a terrible project. It's a scam. I'm just trying to look at the facts. This project, they raised 70 million dollars in a Dutch auction, not much of a roadmap, track record, you know, shout out to this guy, okay, hotshot for putting this thread together. So it's like the founder is saying like, hey, you know, this is gonna be the next blue chip, but then what he's delivering is completely different, right? Whatever these things are, they don't look like what's promised. I mean, if you just look at some of these assets, it's kind of like, come on, you know what I mean? It's just not that great. And so a lot of people feel like they paid re Ethereum for something that's not that great, right? And I would feel the same way. I didn't mint it, I didn't buy this, but I mean, the other thing is like a lot of these assets can be purchased on the marketplace. Basically, the guy just took assets that already developed, called it a different name, put it into his game and try to make the trailer and, you know, create a lot of sizzle and excitement around it. But then, you know, it's all sizzle, no stake in the end when it comes to actually delivering all the promise. And not only that, but uh, it seems like the person who runs this project took the money, it took millions of dollars, he spent two million, bought some blue chip NFTs with that money during the dip. Why would you do that? You know, it's just like, why? You know, you're supposed to build the game. Now, does this project have a chance to turn around? Possibly, but then from my understanding, and it seems like people did their research, it's a fine, I mean, I'm not trying to be CoffeeZilla over here and be a detective, but like this guy is doxxed or forced to be doxxed or someone found his identity. He's a young person, so he's not really a business experienced person from my understanding, right? I guess to make things right, he would have to, you know, maybe find a new CEO, find a development company to use this money and actually build a great game. But honestly, at this point, it's like, it's pretty difficult. He has a lot of money. He doesn't have to do any. He could just disappear if he wanted to. Yeah, people can make threats, but like at the end of the day, he doesn't have to do anything. And that's always the danger of the NFT space. So the main lesson that I personally got from this is that when people promise a lot of things and they say all these things, but what they show is not quite matching with what they say, it's probably a big red flag. And even if a lot of people buy into something, even if there's a lot of hype, it doesn't mean that you have to buy into it. And you can also find different opportunities that are much better in terms of a risk to reward ratio. So again, don't buy the hype just because everyone is doing it. Because I think in the future, a lot of people got burned. A lot of people are going to get smarter and it's going to be a lot more difficult. And the standard of where we want to put our money is going to be much higher, hopefully compared to before. All right, next project that we're going to be talking about is going to be Battlefly, and I guess it's a play on Butterfly. So it's basically a DeFi game built on Magic. So if you don't know, Magic is like a different ecosystem that is like a layer two on top of Ethereum. This ecosystem, you know, from my, my understanding, is picking up a lot of steam. Battlefly is basically like a DeFi game where you kind of like put your butterflies into this protocol. It's like an auto battler system where, you know, somebody wins, somebody loses, and basically you make magic or you make money as you play the game. Basically, it's kind of like a DeFi protocol, but adding a layer of NFTs on top. So it's like before people would just take their assets, lock it up, and then over time, they would earn like some kind of percentage on their money, right? So it's a similar concept, except there's a game mechanic to it. Your battlefly can like die, it can win matches, and then the more you win, the more money you make, right? So how I originally saw this project was that I saw that Kaiju Kings and Bear Deluxe was collaborating with them. If they're collaborators, then, you know, they're somewhat legit from that standpoint, right? That's where I start to get into it. I found interesting was that when I went onto the Medium article that they have, it's a free mint. So this is something that is very unique to the Magic ecosystem where they're not charging like ridiculous like three ETH amount for your mint. It's all free. It's a free mint, but you have to get whitelisted and things like that. You need Magic in your wallet to do this. There's gonna be 30,000 Genesis cocoons available. But you know, having a free mint is great because it's like the founders don't make money upfront from selling you a picture. They make money on the royalties and if people actually play their game, then they will be rewarded accordingly. And that makes a lot of sense because it puts all the risk on the founders versus putting all the risk 
onto the investors or collectors, just like in Pixelmon, right? And again, if you're looking on their medium, it's just gonna be like a lot of concept art and things like that. It's not a game like you go out and like play like Counter-Strike or Dota. It's, it's really like a DeFi game, right? So it's kind of like you just lock your butterflies in like a little cage and then they fight. From my understanding, you don't see them actually fighting or anything like that. It's more like a statistic type of game where you throw your thing, you get your numbers back, and then you know if you win or lose, and then you think, okay, so this is what I should do next time. So if you're interested in those kind of DeFi games and you're trying to dip your toes into the magic ecosystem, make sure to check out Battlefly, especially because it's a free mint. The next project we're gonna talk about is going to be Project Gojira. So I remember I saw this back in the day when it was like December, right? All right, so there's a Genesis Gojira, right? And there's only 333 items and each one is going to be 18 Ethereum, which is pretty crazy for a small collection. Now the art, you know, is subjective. Some people may like it, some people may not like it, right? It's kind of cool, they have different variations, but you know, I was thinking like, why is the Genesis series worth so much, right? And they're launching uh, Genesis 2 and you know, the art's gonna be different from the 2D pixel art that they had. The art's pretty cool, you know, I think for some people, if they like Godzilla and stuff like that, this might be up their alley. But essentially, you know, from my understanding of my research, and you know, I could be totally wrong, I'm all wrong all the time. The reason the prices of the floor are so high is because it's kind of like an alpha group where they give you a lot of whitelist opportunities, right? And I think moving forward, Forward. This is gonna be a popular trend where people are gonna create small NFT sets like, you know, in the few hundreds and then offer them a lot of whitelist opportunities or, you know, alpha and things like that where they're putting a lot of energy to give a very great experience for a small number of people instead of trying to sell out 10,000 off the bat because if you have 10,000 people, it's gonna be hard to satisfy everybody, right? Especially if your thing is whitelist opportunities. But if you start small, each member is really taken care of then the price of this thing is gonna skyrocket because people don't wanna sell it, right? Because they're getting so many benefits because it's like a more of a luxury experience or a very like boutique experience in a positive way. And just a little alpha for you guys, I plan to start one of my own NFT projects in the future, so be on the lookout for that. But anyways, so these guys are doing, you know, a drop of 333. I guess they already have a proven track record of their Genesis collection of 300, you know, not too greedy. They really just built it up organically from my understanding. And I, I would say like most of this following is from the whitelist giveaways that they do on their Twitter channel. It's pretty interesting, right? I don't have one of these myself, so I'm not in the Discord and I don't see what's going on. But for the most part, a lot of people say positive things about it and if that's something you're interested in, just check it out. Next project we're gonna be talking about is gonna be Phantom Galaxies and they've been building for quite a long time. And recently a lot of gameplay started to come out and you can actually download this on their website. We see Kaji or KG, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He's playing this game right here. I mean, the game looks pretty good, right? So is it triple A? It looks like it's triple A and it's a blockchain game, right? So I like the way it looks. It's like that Gundam feel or I've seen other games in the past like similar to the style. And I do believe there's a, there's a pretty niche market for it that will actually buy this game. And what's really cool about this is that you can actually download and play this game by owning an NFT. They're not charging you an arm and a leg for you to play the game like other projects. This is literally 0.007, which is like $18 to get access to the early version of this game. So I really like that a lot because they're going more of like, let's make a good game that's accessible to everybody where you don't have to pay like $10,000 just to get a ticket in. And I really respect that, right? Because these are gaming companies building real games that people will actually play versus people who are just selling expensive pictures and just taking your money, right? And so Phantom Galaxies, definitely check it out, especially if you're into gaming because this is actually pretty cheap, right? 18 bucks. The next project that we're gonna talk about is going to be Dape. Now this is really interesting because when I first found Dape, to me, off the bat, it was like, oh, it's like Hape combined with Doodles and then it's just a derivative of two projects and that's a new project, right? And so I was like, oh, well, is it a crash grab because it's just a copycat, whatever, whatever. But over time, I've been a little impressed. They kind of transitioned out from just copying another style and combining different styles together to making something a little bit more original. And when you look at this trailer, it's pretty dope. This is not copycat anymore. Now it's like something actually unique. Yes, you know, it takes inspiration from like hate and stuff like that, but it doesn't mean it's the same. It's just like a monkey, but you know, it has its own flair, it has its own style, it has its own silhouette. So I appreciate that. So I think a lot of people who are in the sneakers and the hype beast kind of stuff or people who are originally interested in ape, they would definitely probably try to buy something like this. But yeah, I mean, for me, the art is pretty good. I like it. And let's go ahead and go on the website. So the website looking pretty cool. We got the hape falling down, very streetwear kind of vibes, the brands, digital wearables, merchandise, exploring brand. They're doing a lot of things, right? Again, it's all promises. All these things can change, but like I can see them creating different NFTs, like a set. I can see them creating like clothes for your NFT, kind of like what Artifact Studios is doing. Okay, Rolex watch with the, oh, dude, this is pretty sick. I actually didn't, haven't seen this yet. Yeah, man, like uh, the art is really good. You know, that's one thing they got going for them. The art and the creative direction is really good. And the other thing I really appreciate about this project is that from my understanding, the founders are docs. They're showing their real face on the Twitter accounts. And you know, you can go into Instagram and I'm sure like if you really want to do some CoffeeZilla type of digging, you can figure out like who they exactly are and what their names are and stuff like that. So I appreciate that other founders 
He has 600,000 subs on YouTube. I'm not sure what his YouTube channel is. I'm not sure if this guy is Docs or not. This guy shows his face. He's a CG guy, computer generated art, worked at Nike's, worked for Skepta, Future, a lot of hip hop artists. So I definitely see like that inspiration there. And the other guy, not Docs, right? So some of them are Docs, some of them aren't Docs, but you know, at least some of them are, which is a good look. And the guy who's doing all the CG, he's worked with like, you know, Nike and like all these rappers. So that's definitely a big plus for me. So overall, in terms of roadmap, I don't really tend to look at it too much because it's like all these things can change and they're not like guaranteeing that they're gonna do all these things. But I can see them, you know, being a metaverse brand. I can see people like buying into this, holding it and wanting to be a part of this community. So this is something I would definitely keep on your radar. And it seems like the mint is gonna happen on March 5th, according to the website. So that's coming up soon. Now the next project I wanna touch on is Invisible Friends because I got a lot of comments in my other video and I said a lot of things about Invisible Friends and their collective saying that you know they're just making project after project after project and it kind of felt like a cash grab in a sense. So I'm gonna revise some of what I said because uh, I don't think I was necessarily accurate on that and I did a little more research and if you ever catch me you know with the wrong information or maybe it doesn't look like I researched my stuff enough, you know, I'm totally open to it. I can always be wrong, right? And so if you leave it in the comments, I'm always happy to adjust what I say. So Invisible Friends, you know, they just reviewed and it seems like the price is holding pretty well. And from my understanding of people in the comments, it's letting me know that there is a community for this. There are people that are actually fans of this and they will hold this. I definitely respect that. You know, I was wrong about it being a cash grab and it's just gonna dump right after review. Totally wrong about that. The other thing I will correct is that Marcus is just the artist. He's not necessarily like the business person who's creating all these projects. So I'm gonna take back that statement and he's working on the project Invisible Friends and Garbage Friends, right? You know, so overall, you know, looking at the art, I like it. You know, overall, I do like the actual art. I don't really know what the utility is still because like I did a little more research and I was trying to look into like, what are they trying to do? But they're not really clearly communicating what's gonna happen next. I don't know what the roadmap is. I don't know what the utility is beyond getting whitelisted for the next project that they drop. If you know what the utility is, please put it in the comments. Let me know so I can pin it and let everybody see. But until then, you know, that's the risk in terms of like utility play, right? But you know, the art is still good. And the other thing I'll take back is that Random Character Collective. Now I understand that it's a collective of artists that help each other create NFT sets, which is great, right? Before I said it was a company that just, you know, making NFT after NFT, but it's more of a collective that collaborates together. Now the thing that, you know, I'm really curious to understand, and if you know the answer, please put it in the comments, is that you got Invisible Friends. It's got, it's holding like a nice, you know, six ETH floor and things like that, which is great. I'm curious about the other projects that Random Character Collective came out with, right? So like Slim Hoods and Mood Rollers. Mood Rollers right now it's sitting at a 0.4 ETH floor, Slim Hoods 0.5, and before it was like 2.5 or 2, something like that, because you would get whitelisted to get Invisible Friends. Now that Invisible Friends is out, I'm curious to know like, what is the value of a Mood Roller? Is it gonna be like just art, just like how Art Blocks comes out with of collection after collection, or is there gonna actually be utility, a metaverse play, or things like that? And from my understanding of what they're communicating and what's easy to find online, I don't see the utility. And so the only thing I would worry about as someone who would be collecting these items is that, you know, when we look at art blocks, you know, they had a really big run. A lot of things that they were putting out in art blocks curated had these crazy prices. And then because they were like dropping new collections over and over and over and over, eventually the prices just started crashing down. Things went from like 15 ETH all the way to like five ETH. I think looking at history, we kind of like, I'm seeing similarities. I'm not saying it's exactly the same and I'm not, I'm not saying I know everything about art. What's gonna be the utility for mood rollers? I'm not sure yet. What's gonna be utility for some hoods? I'm not really sure. And then what's gonna be the utility for invisible friends? I'm not sure either. Are they going to build like a whole metaverse world? Possibly, but are they communicating that to the public on their website? No, they're not. And so that would be the risk that I would be looking at as a potential collector. Can they build a big brand out of this and put up a lot of artists and, and constantly expand and have people keep buying in and things like that and everything goes up? Sure, but everything can go up for Forever, and that's the thing that I would pay attention to if you're looking to buy any of these projects. I still think the art is good though, by the way. Okay, and so with that said, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.